Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is Satisfaction Saturday. I don't know about you, but I'm so satisfied with God and God alone. He does great and marvelous things in this world and in all of our lives. You know, in the midst of all that we have seen happen this past week, I hope you've prayed for all of those persons that you have seen. We have seen the news. We've seen what's happened locally by way of, of gun violence. We've seen what has happened in Charlotte. God bless those families of those officers that were killed and may God continue to bless us to share the good news of the gospel that people might know that God wants us to have life and to have it more abundantly. Let's please reach out in prayer and compassion to all of those who are in the law enforcement community. Let's pray for all of those people all over the world who've been victims of gun violence. Let's pray for those persons who suffer from mental illness that we might get them all the help that they need. You know, on a day like today, it's a day that we need to know that God loves us. God loves us in such a powerful way that he calls us that we might make a difference in the world. Today, I invite you to look with me at Mark's gospel, the 10th chapter, verses 42 through 45. A very short passage it begins to talk to us about people who have leadership authority over us and people who are rulers. It tells us in verse 43, God wants us to be different. And whoever wants to be a leader must first be a servant. You know, when we see what's happening in our world today, we need to ask ourselves, who are we voting for? We need to ask ourselves, who do we put in charge of things? We need to make sure that we have people who are leading us, who have been led by God, who have a servant mentality. This text begins to remind us of something that is so very powerful, that God sent his only son, Jesus, who was the greatest leader that we've ever seen because he was a servant. He came to do the work that God has sent him to do. Today, may you and I say, God, I want to be a servant. I want to be a servant leader. I want people to see me in leadership serving you and serving the present age. That was a beautiful song that we used to always sing. To serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. May I and all my powers engage to do the master's will. Well, I'm happy that God's will is for all of us to share the good news of Jesus Christ and to tell everyone how God has saved us and how he wants to save them. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had people who are in leadership who understood their responsibility is not to lord over people, but to be an example of how good leadership happens. Good leadership happens by demonstrating the significance of God's power in our lives and the Holy Spirit being at work in us. Great servant leaders are those who understand. There are those who know how to not only sympathize, but empathize with families who've gone through difficulties, those who've had hardships, those who need to know that there's a better way and we're striving to make it better. We must make it better by having better public policy. We must make it better by the congregations and the fellowships and the communities in which we serve, that we serve with love and that we serve in such a way that everybody becomes infected with servanthood, that we have found ourselves doing our very best to be servants of God and servants to the people of God. This text begins to remind us if you want to be a leader, you got to be a servant. Today, may all of us be leaders by being servants to tell everybody, I am following the man from Galilee. I'm following Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one who's the savior of this world. And whenever I follow him, he blazes a trail that all of us can walk in his footsteps. Today, I want to challenge you as I challenge myself. Let's walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Let's be a leader that leads by example, by showing everybody how God has been gracious to us and let's be gracious to them. Tomorrow, I want to invite you to come and celebrate with us at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship at our seven o'clock a.m. virtual service, as well as our nine o'clock in-person service. Take the Lord with you everywhere you go and we'll see you at the Fountain. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. 
Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Fountain.